Alan Calder is the CEO of GRC International Group, the market leader for cyber defense in depth strategies and resources. Alan, thank you for joining us. Cybersecurity and data privacy issues seem to be in the press almost every day now. Is this because there's been an increase in incidents or an improvement in incident detection? Or is it just a matter of their being publicized more often now? So I think that's a very good question. The, the, the reality isn't that uh, cybercrime is a new thing. Cybercrime, uh, intrusions on networks, attacks, malware, uh, viruses have been going on almost as long as uh, internet connectivity has been a part of how uh, we've approached doing business. What's changed over the last five or ten years is the focus and uh, effectiveness of cyber attacks and that's changed because of the focus and effectiveness of cyber attackers uh, and that manifests itself in statistics like uh, the average device will experience today about uh, one phishing attack every uh, 11 or 12 seconds within the next five or six years that'll be down to a uh, attack every maybe one or two seconds uh, in other words Cyber attackers have found that there are effective ways of getting into networks and getting at assets. And the reality is that 83% of breaches today are from outside the organization and they are driven by the opportunity at financial gain. Something like 95% of all successful cyber attacks have financial uh, opportunism or financial objectives tied to them. And when you think about that, you realize that all of the headlines which are given to uh, attacks by rogue states and nation states like uh, Russia, North Korea, Iran, China, uh, while important, while disruptive, are relatively minor from the perspective of any organization thinking about what does it do. Uh, and the year-on-year -year increase in cyber crime, in cyber uh, criminal activity, is driving inevitably much greater exposure uh, in the press and elsewhere. And it's driving much greater exposure because uh, there are so many more opportunities for cyber attackers to make their attacks. Why are there so many opportunities? Well, last few years, particularly with the COVID pandemic, has accelerated digitization in organizations, has accelerated, accelerated a migration to cloud uh, and that's meant that more and more organizations contribute to uh, a hugely expanded digital footprint and a hugely expanded digital footprint means a much much bigger attack surface for attackers and with approximately 60 percent of knowledge workers today now working remotely some or all of the time uh, the reality is that for digital attackers usually based a long way away, miles, jurisdictions away from their targets, the opportunities, the range of digital vulnerabilities, the areas into which they can expand their operations, keep on growing. And that means that the cybercrime ecosystem attracts more and more uh, clever people. It attracts more and more focus by uh, serious organized crime. Uh, and it means that there is more and more criminal activity. So how does that all get into uh, newspaper headlines? Well, it gets into newspaper headlines because of a couple of things. The first is that uh, crime is focused on obtaining money. And obtaining money means either stealing cash or it means stealing uh, assets and selling them on the dark web, or it means collecting information and holding the target organization to ransom uh, for a return of their assets. Or uh, increasingly what it means is stealing data, probably personal data, holding the organization to ransom for return of the data. Having got paid a ransom, you then hold the individuals to uh, ransom for uh, some more money, not to reveal their data. And then once that's happened, you sell the data anyway, because if you're a cyber criminal, you're not necessarily focused on uh, abiding by some form of commercial contract. You're looking at how you maximize your income from every single activity that you are involved in. So, 
Um, the reality is that cyber crime has huge ramifications and affects growing numbers of organizations and it affects them quite seriously. The average uh, value, the average cost to an organization of a cyber breach is about $4.3 million, according to IBM's most recent research, $4.3 million. And the average organization may have anywhere between three and 10 uh, fairly major financial financially motivated cyber breaches in a 12 month period. Uh, in the last 12 months, for instance, one in three organizations has reported having had a cyber breach. And it's still the case that most organizations prefer not to own up to a cyber breach. They only own up to it because the press finds out uh, or because a number of people whose data has been compromised uh, raise it publicly or bring it to the press's attention. Uh, and that leads to an exposure uh, and that typically leads to uh, a drop in the share price of the organization. So we see more and more organizations uh, beginning to realize they've got to do something about cybercrime because their share price and their uh, customers are being affected by the impact of cybercrime. Um, and it's difficult for organizations to take appropriate steps to deal with it because there is a tremendous shortage of cyber professionals of people who can deal with helping organizations set up and defend themselves against cyber crime. The current estimate is the cybersecurity skills gap is something in the order of 2.7 million people. So there's a, for every 100 uh, vacancies, there are only about 66 people who are able to apply for the vacancy. So that means organizations who realize they should be doing something about cyber crime simply don't have the capability and they can't get the capability to do something about it. And then, of course, when they turn to uh, the supply chain, the supply chain is also going more and more uh, digital, which means that not only are they as an organization exposed, but their supply chain is exposed and attackers can get into the organization through the supply chain. And that whole combination of uh, financial, financially motivated cybercrime, uh, the impact on organizations, the impact on individuals, and the reality of uh, the, 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 the way in which a single uh, cyber breach can affect thousands, hundreds of thousands of individuals inevitably means that there is more and more coverage being given to cyber crime. So uh, the answer to the question is, no, it's not just happen, happening fortuitously to get a bit more uh, coverage. The reality is that the market for services and solutions to help organizations deal with cybercrime is growing uh, tremendously. It's currently worth about $1 trillion. And it's an addressable market of about $1 trillion, growing at about 12.5% uh, per annum. So it will very soon be somewhere between one and a half and two trillion dollars worth of services helping organizations try and address cybercrime. So there you are. That's uh, what I think is happening in the market. We all worry about data breaches, cybercrime, and cyber warfare, particularly when the state of global politics seems more volatile. But to what extent do they affect businesses on the bottom line? Is the legal and regulatory landscape appropriate or informed by an abundance of caution? Again, I think that's a very good question. As I, as I was saying, talking about the expansion in the cybercrime ecosystem, uh, um, taking advantage of the expense, expansion in organizational digital footprints in the digital supply chain, uh, and the size of the average breach, $4.3 million uh, or so, um, the reality is that organizations are suffering significantly from breaches. And when you have a breach, uh, you not only are going to end up paying money quite often to the cyber attackers in the form of ransom, if you haven't got uh, proper cyber defense in depth, which enables you to deal with and recover from an attack. Uh, but you're also likely to find yourself paying money to regulators because of the growing uh, range of uh, regulation and law covering cyber crime uh, and covering data protection. And remember, uh, nowadays, pretty well every single cyber breach is also a personal data breach. There is personal data which is exposed, stolen, held to ransom. Uh, and that brings organizations uh, to encounter, if they haven't before, uh, either UK or EU GDPR, or in America, perhaps a class action suit, um, and uh, versions of that depending on local 
data protection law and and under EU and UK GDPR, uh, the maximum fine for absence of appropriate technical and organizational measures, steps to protect personal data could cost up to 4% of global turnover as a fine. So you're facing damages that you uh, have to deal with in the way of paying a ransom, maybe several ransoms, regulatory fines, but also you're paying for diversion of management time and effort to deal with the breach, uh, and you're dealing with loss of customers because uh, and the statistics indicate very clearly that customers look at organizations that have had breaches and go, hmm, not for me, and you're looking, if you're a listed company, at a decline in your share price. So all in all, organizations don't want to have supply, don't want to have cyber breaches, they want to avoid them. And whereas they used to be able to turn to uh, cyber insurance and go, well, you know, we've kind of got a fallback if we have a cyber attack, it's unlikely. Uh, if we do, we've got cyber insurance, we'll be able to claim on our cyber insurance um, and we'll be able to deal with it. But the reality today is that cyber insurers have got are tired of paying out for cyber breaches. It costs them too much and ceases to be economic. So cyber insurance has become a difficult marketplace for most organizations. Cyber insurance is difficult to obtain. It's expensive. And you've got to prove that you're unlikely to be breached. Remember, insurers are not looking for the opportunity to pay out insurance. What they're looking for is an opportunity to make profit. So rather like insuring a building against uh, physical crime, you have to prove that you've got the appropriate locks, burglar alarms and so on, you have to prove that your organization has got the appropriate level of cybersecurity controls in place. Now, it's important to bear in mind that um, the favored vector of attack is through inadequate processes and through people. What cyber criminals have realized is that uh, it's the human being which is where the uh, weakness is, and so they focus on human beings. They don't focus so much these days on the technology infrastructure. They assume that's probably uh, fairly complex and difficult to get through. Uh, and that makes it even harder for organizations to work out how to demonstrate that they are genuinely secure. Ransomware has become the uh, attack tool of choice. It's pervasive. Uh, it's used in almost every single uh, successful email-based uh, attack. It's usually a phishing uh, email that does the job, but it could be some other form of uh, ingress. Um, and ransomware is very high profile, very disruptive. You see organizations like the Irish um, Health System, the uh, many of the uh, institutions of the National Health Service, UK universities, uh, a major pipeline in the uh, northeast of the United States, local councils, all of them are impacted by ransomware, impacted where you have to resort to pen and paper to do your work. If people can still remember how pen and paper works, um, you have to send people home. It's a major disruption. And that's led, of course, to this proliferation of data protection regulation and increasingly cybersecurity regulation laws around what organizations have to do to demonstrate that they are appropriately secure. And that is leading more and more to the evolution of frameworks and standards uh, against which organizations are expected to demonstrate compliance. International standards like ISO, uh, IEC 27001, uh, European data protection standards like Euro privacy. Um, and organizations increasingly have to demonstrate to their customers as well as to their staff and other stakeholders that they're genuinely it can deal with the range of issues which uh, everybody is increasingly aware are issues for all organizations. So, no, I think the short answer is I don't think that it's an abundance of caution that's leading to uh, greater activity by organizations to defend themselves. It's a recognition that, in truth, they are running behind cyber criminals. Cyber criminals are more advanced, more sophisticated, better at uh, executing effective attacks than most organizations are at defending themselves. Other than presumably compliance with regulations, what's driving growth in the cybersecurity market? How big is it? And is it segmented in any way? Let me, let me start with the question of segmentation. Cybersecurity really has three domains. There is people, process, and technology. They overlap to an extent, uh, but 
in order to defend an organization, you've got to make sure that people are aware of what cyber threats look like. They can deal with them. You need processes which ensure that uh, you configure technology correctly. You have the right password policies. Uh, you identify threats effectively. Uh, you deal with them through the organization. You build a cyber defense in depth uh, model. It's what we call the governance, risk management and compliance approach. And you have technology. Now, Historically, uh, the technology infrastructure in organizations is the preserve of the CIO um, and of the IT team. Uh, and boards have typically not had a really good understanding, other than in tech businesses, of technology. So they tended to turn to the IT team, to the CIO, and say, you deal with technology, you just deliver it as long as it works. Um, and they're not used to asking the kind of detailed questions about how it works, what it should cost. When they see attacks coming in aimed at infrastructure, they go, well, that's the preserve of the CIOs. We better have a CISO who's going to deal with security. But it's still a technology issue. It's not an issue for us, the board. We just palm it off on the technology team. And the reality is, therefore, that organizations which supply security technology solutions have built a very substantial uh, presence in the marketplace over the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, malware, firewalls, um, uh, multi-factor authentication, single sign-on, a whole range of security solutions, very effective, uh, cost a lot of money, don't make a lot of difference because the attack vector of preference is through people and process. People are inquisitive, people uh, fall prey to um, an encouragement to do something that will make them liked, that will fall prey to doing something that they think their boss wants them to do, uh, will be inquisitive and want to find out what their colleagues' salaries are. There's a whole bunch of things that will lead people to do what they shouldn't do. They'll click on a link because uh, they think it's an incoming purchase order and they're desperate to hit their sales target for the month. And any one of those is likely to contain a phishing email, something which will download or which will reach out to the internet and pull in malware from the command and control server uh, and proliferate through the network. When the person realizes they've made a mistake, the next thing they don't do is contact their IT team and say, I've made a mistake because they think they're going to get into trouble. So they're not trained and organizations don't have proper incident response processes that enable them to have people report errors fast so they can close them down fast. Hey, presto, attackers go after human beings. They go after weaknesses and processes. They go after organizations who um, will accept that a, 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 a supplier can say, when you pay my invoice, I've just changed my bank account. Can you send it to this new bank account details? And they'll send that in by email. And organizations will process that and send it to the new bank account there. Uh, it's called a business email compromise attack. They won't have a process which ensures that this is a genuine change of bank account details, not an attacker who's intercepted an exchange of emails and has diverted money. The average business email compromise attack, by the way, costs about $50,000 to the organization, and it happens quite often to organizations, small and large. Cyber criminals, you might think, go after big organizations because they've got lots of assets. Well, they do, but they go after small organizations because they've got limited defenses. They don't have the resources to defend themselves. And hey, if you can break into uh, 20 small organizations and get 10 grand from all of them, that might be easier and quicker than breaking into one organization and trying to get 200,000 uh, pounds from it. So all organizations are targets, all organizations, every sector. Yeah, they prefer uh, medicine, they prefer finance, they prefer manufacturers. But, but organizations which have vulnerabilities is what attackers go for. So market is very substantially, the cybersecurity market is made up of technology providers selling high ticket items to organizations, to the IT teams they've traditionally dealt with, which are not going to make a lot of difference. There's a small but fast growing number of organizations who supply services into the GRC space, people and process. There are now something like 2000 cybersecurity organizations in the uh, UK. Uh, many of those are GRC kind of related. They're doing penetration testing or PCI compliance or some form of consultancy or staff awareness training. One of the small components of what an organization needs to draw on if it is to build a genuine uh, cyber defense in depth uh, 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 way to deal with crime. But of course, 
Most organizations, because they're doing one little thing, are doing something which doesn't mesh with all the other things that organizations need. If you build cyber defense in depth, you've got to build multiple uh, uh, components together. So they interact, they work together to build resilience, which means they need to be designed with integration in mind. And most small companies are just doing a little small part of the puzzle. And, you know, if you think about trying to build a crossword puzzle with bits from five different puzzles, they just don't fit together. Um, you need the bits from a single puzzle maker. And for the organizations who understand that it is about people, process, and technology, that it is about standard compliance, compliance to international standards, to sectoral standards, and can begin to turn that into a positive statement about the quality of their compliance, they begin to gain market share because, as we're saying, the growing awareness of cybersecurity and privacy is key issues means that Customers, whether your customers are businesses or consumers, increasingly want to know that you are a genuinely secure organization with appropriate data protection processes in place. So uh, the market is growing. As I said, um, it'll be worth something in the order of one and a half trillion to two trillion as an addressable market. Um, the biggest portion of the market right now is still tech solutions. The fastest growing part is uh, GRC solutions. And that's really dependent on uh, organizations managements and boards getting their heads around their own accountability, their responsibility for cybersecurity. In the United States, the, uh, the SEC um, uh, is in the process of finalizing a set of rules that will require um, a board C-suites to be able to demonstrate that somebody on the board has a clue about cybersecurity, that they have an approach to manage cybersecurity across the organization. Uh, there's a reckoning that less than uh, a third of all CISOs that have been appointed are capable of stepping up to a board role. So the SEC is bringing in a regulation which will apply huge pressure to boards to put in place GRC approaches, people and process, uh, and they're going to find that they don't actually have the competence. So that's going to drive another huge uptick in the market for GRC solutions, um, which I reckon are probably currently maybe between 10 and 20% of the total uh, addressable cybersecurity market. Where does GRC International Group sit in relation to the market? And where's the growth opportunity for the business? Is there an international dimension? So GRC has always focused on the people and process domains. We've always seen technology as being something which is important. It's the base on which organizations work. It's particularly important today. But we've always recognized that for most organizations, their real weakness is going to be in humans. Uh, that the only way you can secure an organization completely is by cutting it off completely from the internet um, and not allowing anything to be uploaded or input from anywhere in any format. And that kind of means that you go out of business. So we've always recognized that people and process is where we should focus. And over the last 15 to 20 years, we've built a very comprehensive portfolio of integrated services, which address all of the aspects of what cyber defense in depth might need to draw on. And cyber defense in depth, while it's got five pretty standard layers to it, uh, could be different for each of a number of different sectors, for different organizations, for different sizes of organization, the detail of what makes them up. But whatever you're going to make your defense in depth structure out of, the elements need to integrate. Like the example I gave you, a puzzle, the bits need to come from the same box of pieces. They need to fit together. And that's what we do. We, uh, we fit things together in a way that works. We're increasingly looking at how we can make it easy for our clients to demonstrate cost effectively their compliance, uh, uh, how they're meeting their compliance obligations. So sitting in uh, one of our businesses is a platform called Cyber Comply, which is becoming a key part of the group because Cyber Comply uh, enables customers to automate how they go about demonstrating compliance to a growing range of frameworks and standards uh, and to laws. 
it's reckoned that at the moment most organizations have got to be able to demonstrate compliance to around about six different frameworks uh, depending as gdpr is a framework for instance um, if you're in the us you'll have an sec set of regulations there may be an se there may be a sexual regulation or two that you've got to comply with you may have to comply with iso 27001 uh, in the uk you may well have a contractual obligation to comply with cyber essentials cyber essentials plus so all our frameworks they all require documentation staff awareness training uh, they all require evidence collection the ability to be audited we're building cyber comply so that it supports organizations in doing all of that and in being able to access the range of integrated uh, a comprehensive range of integrated services that will enable organizations to not only build uh, and and, and, and maintain, but also manage positively and demonstrate to clients and stakeholders how effectively they are doing that. And that, of course, should turn into uh, uh, market share for organizations that do it well. <clears throat> it turns into competitive advantage. It reduces costs and becomes a key part of how the organization of the future addresses today's set of increasingly sophisticated cyber and data protection challenges. This is clearly a fragmented market. Do you see the market consolidating? It is, as you say, a very fragmented market. 2,000 odd uh, cybersecurity companies in the UK, thousands of companies around the world. Uh, many governments have recognized cybersecurity and privacy as being big issues, so they've put uh, seed funding into uh, startup uh, uh, clusters. Uh, there are many PE and uh, venture capital investors who've invested in organizations going into that space, often, of course, into the technology area, which is kind of a pity. There's been a lot of consolidation in the technology uh, um, domain. In any case, uh, over the next five years, we see significant consolidation in the people and process domains, the GRC suppliers, because customers don't want to have to deal with half a dozen or 10 different suppliers of bits of a solution, which they've then got to work out how to integrate, how to make them work together, how to make a, a policy that you get from one organization, talk to a set of staff training uh, or staff awareness training that you put in place that you've got from a second organization. How does that reflect the practices that you want people to apply to how they do a legitimate interest assessment when assessing what they might be able to do with personal data which they've collected? All of that is just kind of hard work. And for most organizations, they've got their own customers. They're in business to supply their products and services to their customers. So they need to be able to turn to a supplier whose expertise they can rely on uh, so that they can focus on what they are there to do. And that's really where we see GRC position today. We are a company with 20 years worth of expertise around integrating cybersecurity and privacy solutions. And we see organizations like us as being at the forefront of market consolidation over the next five years, driven by pressure from our customers to provide integrated cost-effective solutions that mean they can effectively put in place something which uh, uh, one turnkey uh, solves all of their problems. Finally, what would put a smile on your face in five years time? Oh, uh, in five years' time, if one could look at the market and go, gee, the organizations defending themselves are now one step ahead of cyber criminals. Uh, we've actually evolved defenses which cyber criminals are scrambling to find a way through. That would make me smile. Um, uh, I think it's sadly highly unlikely. Uh, and so my secondary smile comes from seeing continued growth uh, in and, and, and integration and consolidation in the whole uh, GRC uh, supply side uh, looking after organizations so that they can, uh, through their own resilience and defense in depth, really cope with the really complex challenges they'll be dealing with in five years' time. Alan Calder, thank you.